Afternoon YouTube. It's uh, a rather cold Sunday. Anyway, I have decided between now and Christmas Eve that I'm going to make a series of videos talking about my top hobbies, if you like. And this video, I'm going to start with my Lego. It's not one that I've ever really spoken of on this channel because I've got the other channel. I've got the Bricknut 30 channel, um, which if I remember I'll link down below for anyone that may want to subscribe. But anyway, so what I want to talk about is this hobby and why it's probably my favourite hobby, my number one hobby. Um, if I had to number them, you know, like one being my favourite, ten being least favourite, you know, like then Lego would be most likely number one. Anyway, uh, as a child, I had two favourite toys, and my parents would confirm this as well. I either played with Lego or toy cars, matchbox, hot wheels, etc. Um, weren't really interested in anything else. Those were the only two I pretty much went to, you know. My go-to toys. I used to just love sitting there building things with Lego, you know. I'd sit there for hours quietly up in the bedroom building, much to Mum's delight when she hoovered. I dread to think how many Lego bricks went up the hoover, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, but as I got to my very late teens, early 20s, I actually handed down the box of Lego I had to my youngest brother. Um, then after that, I kind of regretted it and wanted some Lego again. So literally two, three years later, sort of like early 2000s, I ended up getting some more Lego. Um, then I officially got into Lego about 2006 when I started buying sets from Woolworths, when that was still a store on the high street. Um, I think what may have actually killed it for me at the time um, was that well, I just didn't like Lego's design of sets. I actually hated it, and I think that's what may have put me off Lego at that point. And then a few years later, when they, you know, changed their methods again and started building, you know, larger vehicles like this that actually look like vehicles, and not something from a futuristic sci-fi movie, um, I got interested again and started buying the sets and the vehicles mostly. Because that's all I could afford. <laughs> um, and basically since about 2006 I've uh, built the collection up as it is. Pun not intended. Um, so here we are, you know, 10, 11 years later. And I've now got a lounge which is primarily just full of Lego aside from the computer and a stereo up the corner. And a Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, I always wanted to build a Lego town. So, I figured as I very rarely get visitors here, apart from a couple of friends that might pop over for an hour or two. You know, even my family don't really come up here. I usually go out to and see them, you know. I figured there weren't no point in me having all the usual bloody lounge furniture like a a sofa and whatnot, so I got rid of it all. Got rid of it all and built the town. And uh, most of the buildings on here are what we call mocks, my own creation. Um, which means, you know, I basically built them from my own imagination. You know, no instructions, no manuals. 
Um, there is a couple sets on here. The train station is a set. I actually just made some modifications there to customise it really and make it fit into the town because Lego with their sets they always leave the backs open so kids can you know get figures in there and actually play with them it makes the set more playable so I sealed off the back to make it look a bit more like a building a real building and uh, added the extra window here this whole bit is an extra bit it was only this big well I thought that looked a bit odd so I added the extra bit on top and added some extra lighting and whatnot and uh, yeah I like it <sighs> it uh, it's getting there. It's a slow build, mostly because of the budget. <laughs> My budget's not a big budget, unfortunately. Which uh, does make me a little bit jealous of some of the uh, YouTubers that I watch um, who have huge collections, you know. And actually have so much that they're able to run a Bricklink store, which is a website specifically for AFOLs like me if you don't know what that stands for that stands for adult fan of Lego uh, to sell loose Lego and Lego sets and whatnot so for me it's a good site to go to if I need to source a few parts for a project like my uh, office block right here or the um, hospital which is right over the back there um, which I do need to get some bits for. It's nearly finished. It's taken me nearly a year to get as far as I have, but it did go on hiatus for a while. And it keeps going on hiatus because I keep running out of parts. Um, despite all the thousands of parts that I've got, I have actually found that uh, it doesn't matter what project you want to build, you're going to need parts <laughs> because there's bound to be something despite how much Lego you've got that you do not have and you need to get or you do not have enough of so <laughs> but it's not just about the town and you know I'll get to this in a minute but uh, I've got a collection of sets um, these are not all the sets I own I do have a bunch of sets that are not assembled but on this shelf here, I'll zoom in a bit, we've got all sets which are from the early 1980s right up to the mid 1990s. They're not in any order, they're not in, you know, order of year, I've just stood them up there. Basically in order of what type of vehicle they are. <clears throat> Excuse me, you know, I've got the fire service there, and I've got the ambulances, the police, and some of the longer vehicles with trailers. And some SUVs and whatnot, and uh, a couple of tow trucks in there, and diggers, and refuse truck. <laughs> and then on the top shelf up there, I've got some new sets, apart from the ambulance right on the end there, which I built. Kind of a mock. I sort of copied it from an existing set, but done it in my own design and colours. So it's a, it's a kind of mock. Uh... Some sets I actually bought. Most of these sets on this shelf I actually uh, bought on eBay. Some I downloaded instructions for and uh, built them out of my loose Lego. The um, racing set on the end here was one I built from instructions I downloaded. The fire station, uh, this police station, this medical centre they call it and this shell garage I actually bought from the same eBay um, a bit cheaper than what they would have been worth because those parts missing the eBay recognized that so priced it accordingly so uh, I nabbed them and uh, replaced all the parts that were missing so they're no complete sets uh, this police station was another one I built from instructions. It's missing one piece. It's missing the um, antenna. One of these. Which is a very rare piece to get hold of. Especially one that isn't broken. 
And the same with those two gas stations. I built those from instructions I downloaded. And this building, the last one, I bought a job lot of Lego, big box of Lego, and uh, the instructions for it were in there, so I managed to piece that together as well. I had to buy the conveyor belt. That was it for that, I believe. I don't think I had to buy anything. No, I'm pretty certain I didn't have to buy anything else. That's the only bit that was missing. Uh, it's, it's the most expensive hobby I've got. You know, I've got quite a few, probably four or five different hobbies. This is the one that I um, work on the most, and this is the most expensive. Uh, anyway, next, the um, amount of sorting that this has taken, and there's still some that I need to do, it's still not, it's about 99% done. Well, I could just leave it as it is, but I've got drawers down here that are so chock full, I need to reduce them, so I'm going to get some more of these at some point. The store I get them from doesn't have them in over Christmas because I have the Christmas stuff in, so I've got to wait, but then I can split these by colour. So I'll be able to actually shut some drawers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this actually took me a good two years to get this, to get my Lego sorted as it is. With all the tubs and bigger drawers under here and all of these. You know, all of these I had to buy under there, and all of these I bought. And there's a few here that I found second hand, and a few of these that were given to me by stepdad when he had to clear out his workshop when they moved. So, <clears throat> yeah, so over time, you know, it got sorted several times because there were several parts that were just thrown in one tray like this regardless of colour because I didn't have the drawers at the time to sort them by colour like these and then eventually I sort these by type and colour so I've got these uh, little slope bits sorted by colour and the little square bits sorted by colour and all the round ones and then I've got the transparent versions in there and oh it was worth it though took a lot of time mostly because you know I had to sink funds into buying the drawers and being on limited funds I could only buy so many at a time so you know if there was a set I wanted that usually got priority over the drawers so that's why it took as long as it did if I just ignored buying sets and other things and just went for the drawers I could have sorted it a lot quicker but that's the reason it took so long, but it was worth it. It makes life so much easier when I'm creating, which is why I've got this bench here. It's my dump come workbench. <laughs> dump because I dump everything on it. But like I said, it was worth doing this sorting. And uh, under here, Right over the back, there is a big plastic tub full of instruction manuals and instruction sheets for the newer sets I've got and the older ones because I've got, even got a shelf up there and I've got my bookcase over there which has got my newer sets on. Both of these have got the newer sets on. Um, but due to the lack of display space what I will do is keep sets assembled that I buy for a while about a year maybe whatever and then dismantle them sort them out and put the instructions in there so I've actually got a ton of sets not made up probably at least a hundred sets if I were to guess um, one day I will actually go through that box and actually find out one, how many sets I actually have that have official instructions anyway, because like I said, I downloaded it for some of these. Um, 
and how many I've actually got made up or not made up I should say but that's going to take some time to sort that because there's a lot there is a lot in there <laughs> You know, I've got to be motivated to do it, but uh, I've got all sorts. I've even got under here, actually, another box there, full of um, models that I can't put on display. And under there, there's some boxes for Lego sets. I've got some vintage ones under there. I've actually got a complete, two complete vintage Lego Technic sets under there that I uh, picked up. So, uh, value of this, I don't like to think about it. <laughs> I'm not one that likes to brag, I'm not one that likes to boast, so if someone asked, I would give them my estimate, but if it's not asked, then I don't give it, because like I said, I'm not the boastful type. Counting all the new sets I've got, and all the sets not made up, and then all the loose Lego as well, it's, I just don't like to think about it, it's just scary to me. It is scary to me to think about it, you know. I dread to think how much I've actually spent over the years as well. But, uh, let's go come through. I have had duplicate sets in as well, and I have actually sold them on. Not necessarily for a profit, but I have sold them on if I wanted to convert it into a different set, so to speak. Excuse me. And, uh, yeah. I'm not giving up on this hospital, though. I know it's taken a year so far, but I'm not giving up on it. It's literally just a handful of parts I need to buy so far to finish that floor. That's not the roof. I've got the roof design to do yet. Haven't even thought about that yet. But I do need to buy several bits to finish this off. Blue tiles being one of them. Anyway, any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll answer them. And uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, give me a like. If you didn't, give me a dislike and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.